Alright, what's up guys? Uh, I'm bored, so I'm going to be showing you guys my somewhat studio, uh, my little uh, home, a uh, cheap studio, but it still helps me record and do what I need to do. So, uh, saying that, uh, it's good enough for me. So, yeah, uh, but I'm going to show you guys my equipment, what I'm using. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you one piece of equipment, which is my Boss ML2 distortion pedal, because my brother is using that right now, and I'm hoping I'm getting it back soon. So, yeah, uh, I made a drum track for him for one of the songs that he made. So, uh, yeah, so he's, he's using that. Anyway, so uh, we'll move on. All right, so starting off, we have my three guitars. My very first guitar guitar right here uh, is my acoustic. It's a Washburn Lion. Uh, pretty cheap, but still very good. Uh, there's only one problem. If you notice, the strings are hanging everywhere right there. That's because the bridge is all jacked up. It's somehow the tension on these strings must have been intense, and it literally just pulled the bridge up, so I have to get that fixed. Which, uh, unless my friend uh, can do it, or my grandpa, or somebody who knows about carpentry or something, unless they can do it for free, uh, then I gotta pay some cash, which I don't have right now. So, then going over here to uh, my first electric, which is the Fender Squire Strat. Uh, I'm missing the high E right now. My friend was playing it and kind of tuned it up and snap. So yeah, I gotta get a new pack of strings. But uh, yeah, it's a good guitar. 179 brand new. Uh, well, that was back in like 2008 uh, when I got my Line 6 also, which I'll show you that next. Uh, the only problem I have with this, it has a great tone if you have the right setting on your pedal. The only problem I have is, unless you have a, no, a noise gate, and you're going to need a noise gate with this guitar if you want to have it, uh, have the pickup selector all the way down. Okay, and I think, if I'm correct, that's a bridge pickup. And for some reason, you get horrible buzz, and I don't know why. So, that's the only problem I have with that. Going over here to my newest guitar um, is my Schecter SGR C7. It's a 7 string. 199 uh, brand new uh, from guitarcenter.com uh, it comes with this, the case, uh, a cable allen wrench, actually two allen wrenches and I believe that's it uh, but I still have the stock strings on there, I haven't put on my Ernie balls yet uh, so yeah I still have yet to put those on but I'm waiting for these to snap uh, I try and get as much use as I can out of my equipment you know even my Fender and my acoustic, <laughs> they I just use the stock strings and you know, so yeah. And then uh, I still got the stock strings and the stock pickups. Uh, they're humbuckers. They're the just the Schecter humbuckers. So I mean, I, I like it. it's really really beautiful guitar. <laughs> so I've had, yeah actually you know what I've seen one review on this that said they didn't like the bridge. I honestly don't know what they were talking about. It's this guitar is really comfortable. So let me move that uh, plastic bag out of the way. Yeah, stuck to my foot. Okay. So yeah, moving on over here, we have one of my amps. Uh, one of my three amps. Uh, so we have my Marshall MG15. Uh, it's uh, I don't know how much it is brand new. Because uh, actually I bought this off my friend. I traded him a guitar for this amp, so I like it. Uh, it also uh, helps if you plug, connect this amp to line 6 because it gives you like a stack kind of feel to it. And of course you got your t uh, volume, your tone, and all that. Uh, the only problem is this guitar, this amp is not good if you're trying to record at night, if somebody's sleeping or something because uh, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to plug the jack into the, emu uh, the emulated headphones or the emulated line out. I'm pretty sure it's the emulated line out that I'm supposed to uh, plug it into. The only problem I have is that once you play, the only way you're going to get any audio to register on your uh, DAW or whatever you use, you know, Cubase, uh, Pro Tools or whatever, 
the only way you're going to get that to register any audio is to turn this up okay but when you turn that up you have to turn it up quite a bit unless you're running it through a mixer I've never tried it through a mixer yet but uh, the only problem I have with that is not only does it turn up the volume going into your uh, software or whatever but it also comes out of the speaker and it's really loud so yeah that's not the best uh, one to use if you're trying to record at night and again if everyone's sleeping because you will make a lot of people very very angry so uh, going down here we have my Randall RB35 uh, bass amp and uh, actually I like this uh, even though you can see the jacks both the jacks active and passive jacks are just shot uh, I, I really need to get this thing fixed up I don't know how much it's gonna, how much it's gonna cost though so yeah my friend said he could probably rewire it but I still gotta get the jacks and because uh, I, don't, I don't really want to move it because it's actually in a spot where it'll actually work now but uh, if I were to move this a little bit it, it'll just like pop out and it'll be like sticking out which is how it's supposed to be but this is the only way I can get it to make a connection so I, I just leave it but uh, yeah this one actually I got for free with my brother's basses old amp uh, I think and yeah he kinda just let, uh, when he went touring with uh, Dima or did you mean Australia his old band which he's no longer in uh, but when he went touring with them he kinda just left this behind at my mom's house in Vegas so yeah I went to go visit her like two years ago saw it laying there called him up said hey can I have this he's like sure so I was like, okay, this poor little bass amp's coming home with me. So, yeah, lugging a 40 or 45 pound bass amp through a Las Vegas airport. Not fun at all. It's like 100 degrees in the airport itself, too. And then, uh, staying on the talk about amps, uh, well, here's my dog, kind of probably going to block the way a little bit. Uh, here's my Ernie Balls for the 7 string and capo. Uh, another part of my studio for my acoustic and yes that's my camera <laughs> and uh, this what I like about the line 6 spider 3 series is actually it acts as a big pod to me not to mention that yeah you good dog but uh <laughs> and uh plus when you plug the quarter inch jack to your mixer or whatever to the record out or phones uh, or, you know a headphone jack it uh, it doesn't register any any sound out of the actual speaker itself, which is really great if you're trying to record uh, at night, you know. So that really does help. And then uh, of course you got your settings: your drive, bass, mid, treble, channel volume, your uh, channels up here. You have your clean, crunch, metal, and sane. That's if you don't have any pedals. That's really good. Uh, you have your tap delay time, your effects, your coarse flange, phaser, tremolo, sweep echo, tap e uh, tape echo, my bad, reverb, reverb, and uh, master volume right here. So that's all right there. And of course, power switch, CD in and out, uh, CD slash MP3 uh, in and out. It's a three fifths millimeter input jack. And then of course, you got your headphones and record out. So, all in all, that's a really great uh, piece of equipment for recording at night and just to get those really good effects or really good sounds, tones, whatever you want to say. So, moving back over here, uh, we have my Casio CA110. It's a, it's a pretty cheap uh, keyboard. I actually got it from my old neighbor who was giving away a lot of stuff. Actually, it's also how I got my desk. He was giving that away, too. Yes, I know. Mountain Dew. I really like Mountain Dew. And Ruffles. But anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It's a really good keyboard. Uh, see, the only problem is it doesn't have any uh, MIDI capabilities. It's just got an Ace uh, DC adapter, my bad. DC adapter and an auxiliary out. But I found a way to actually hook this up to a mixer and record with it. So... Uh, I'll show you that in either a different video if you guys want me to uh, because actually you can hook up uh, keyboards like this that have an auxiliary out and no quarter inch jack or anything so I'll show you guys that if you want uh, next uh, video or if you guys want it again just uh, let me know 
Oh uh, yeah, water too. I really like drinking water. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, my room slash studio, whatever you want to say, is not really clean right now, but you know, that's me. So then, of course, uh, moving on to vocal wise, uh, I have my Natty or Nady, I'm not really sure how you pronounce it, I think it's Natty, uh, SP4C dynamic mic with the windscreen that I bought separately. Uh, I have the music gear uh, tripod boom uh, stand, boom mic stand. Uh, for uh, going back to the mic real quick, it is a dynamic microphone, like I said. Uh, it's got an XLR female jack to a quarter inch male jack. And uh, that covers that. And then I just hook up the jack into my Alesis Multimix 4 USB mixer slash uh, interface. It's USB interface. Uh, I already put a video up about the Alesis, uh my mixer here. So go back to that. I'll put a link up here somewhere or it might just be on the side over there. So uh, it might be just like the recommended videos. So anyway. If it's not, just go to my channel and check it out there too. So, uh, that's my mixer. I have uh, $79.99 brand new uh, off of Sweetwater.com. Free shipping, free tech support, and two year warranty. I'm not sure if it's free shipping all over the country. I don't know if it's because it's local and that's what I got it for. I don't know. But yeah, so there's that. And then. Uh, here's my somewhat monitors, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're not really monitors like Behringer's or M Audios or nothing like that, nothing too fancy, they're actually old speakers from, uh, my old stereo, uh, from an old stereo system from like the 80s, <laughs> so, yeah, but they're still pretty good, they have pretty good bass, and, you know, they're, they're, they're pretty decent, uh, again, really like Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew flavored chapstick. That's how we do it. Anyway, uh, I get sidetracked easily. So then, let me close my Facebook real quick. Okay, and then going to the more digital side of things. Um, yeah, we got Guitar Pro 6 first off, which is what I use to tab down my drums and bass uh, for pretty much any song. Uh, and then I export it as a MIDI, put it into Fruity Loops, and then mess around with the drum kit. Uh, they have drums already in there for the MIDI. They have the, uh, the, the, uh, what's it called? I forgot what it's called now. It's like a MIDI channel, whatever you want to say. It's like a, it, it generates different, uh, instruments. I forgot what it's called now. Uh, LP something? LP. I don't know. I'll, 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 I'll think of it soon. But anyway, and then I just mess around with the instruments, uh, put whatever bass tone I want, whatever tom tone I want, and then uh, I'll, I'll show you guys all that in another tutorial, which I'll put on my other channel, Trigger2295, uh, which is where I got also my very first uh, song, my original song. It's also on that channel. I'll put a link somewhere up here. And uh, yeah, so... Again, I'll show you how I get the drums and EQ them separately instead of having one big, you know, just drum that you have to, you can't EQ the tom if you want it quieter or louder or whatever. So yeah, I'll show you a tutorial on how I do that. So then going on to my recording software, uh, right here and here. Uh, I have Cubase LE5, which actually I forgot to mention my... Digitech RP355, it's in a drawer, my chair wheel is blocking me right now. Uh, it's a Digitech RP355 effects pedal, uh, effects processor, pedal board, whatever you want to say. Uh, yeah, that's uh, what I use to uh, use for distortion. Again, I would use my boss, but I haven't used it yet with my new mixer because, again, my brother's got it. So, yeah, uh, where was I? Uh, oh, yeah. So, I use Cubase LE5, which came with the RP355, and, uh, yeah, that's what I use for my main DAW. Uh, it's really good software. Uh, it doesn't have as many features as actual Cubase 5 or Cubase 6 or whatever. Nowhere near it, I don't think. But, again, it's really good for my standards, because I'm not really running a big studio or anything. So, it's good for me. 
And then, of course, I also have Audacity, which I've had for quite a while now because I've actually had that before I had Cubase. Uh, the reason why I got that is because uh, I didn't have Cubase yet and I needed recording software, so I just haven't taken this off yet because I actually use that still sometimes if I'm doing something small. My main recording and all that, where I actually record and process all the songs and everything, is Cubase. This is just something I use to mess around a lot of the time. And uh, that covers the recording software and then of course because these monitor, uh, these speakers technically are not really monitors, the speakers are not that great. I forgot to cover one thing here which is uh, my, let me go inside my drawer of just wonders here. Okay, my Sennheiser HD 201s, uh, they're really good. They do get somewhat uncomfortable after wearing them for quite some time. Yeah, my, I know my drawer is a complete mess here. But uh, yeah, they get, they get they get slightly uncomfortable after wearing them for quite some time. But they're overall really great. The bass in them is awesome. They cancel out a lot of noise, and they were like twenty nine dollars, I think twenty nine dollars, brand new from Guitar Center. And uh, yeah, that's about it. So I hope these. Uh, if you have any questions on any equipment I have, oh yeah, sweet water catalog. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions on any equipment I have, feel free to ask me. And then I'll be sure to try and get back to you, but I probably will. That's just how I am. And uh, that's about it. Again, stay tuned because I'll put up a tutorial on how to connect uh, keyboards with a uh, three-fifths millimeter output instead of just a quarter in a quarter inch output. If it's got only a three-fifths millimeter, I'll three 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 and a half millimeter. I think it is. My bad. Uh, but if it's got an auxiliary out. I'll show you how to connect that to a mixer and then record it onto any type of DAW. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. And I uh, hope this helped. Uh, help you make decisions on what you want to buy for a little studio. Alright, uh, don't forget to subscribe. Later.